how can you become more productive? Now, if you clicked on this video, you probably clicked on dozens of other videos on the same topic, but by this point, they probably don't phase you as much because while the tips may be great, they don't apply to you. So in this video, instead of just giving you the top six or seven tips that I want to give you, I'm actually going to show you how they work in real action. I'm going to take my evening to-do list and I'm going to essentially see, can these tips get me to the end of the day with an empty to-do list and a successful evening? So essentially, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Hopefully you guys enjoy these tips. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video after this intro. All right guys, what is going on? Luxury of the journey, helping you succeed on your journey with less stress. Today, I wanted to do something a little bit differently. Instead of just giving you a generic productivity video, I'm gonna actually take you through my evening and show you how different tips that I love using to be more productive actually apply to my to-do list. So let's quickly just go in and look at my computer to see what my to-do list looks like. All right guys, so now we are officially in my computer and well, I just wanna quickly show you my to-do list and give you also tip number one. So tip number one is to first obviously lay down everything you want to have done, but two, also to include the time that you want it to be done and overestimate. So let me just quickly go through an example. So here's my to-do list. Um, I have to do some residency paperwork. There's a lot of it before you start your first job. I need to record a new YouTube video for you guys. It's not this one. Um, I need to fold my clothes because I have a lot of laundry that I just finished. And then I need to edit a blog post before the weekend. So as you can see, it's about 7.05. And so now what I like to do, instead of just putting a to-do list, I like to give myself a deadline on how long um, I expect this task to take. So residency paperwork, I can easily probably do in about 20 minutes, but just overestimate, I'm gonna say 7.45. Recording my YouTube videos usually takes me about an hour. So I'm going to estimate that, you know, it's going to take me 15 minutes to go from the residency paperwork to getting set up to begin my YouTube video. So let's just say, you know, I start at 8 and I finish at 8.45 and then folding clothes, um, who knows how long that'll take. But let's just say um, I finish around 9.15. Um, 30 minutes, this should be enough to fold clothes and then edit blog posts. It usually takes me about an hour to edit blog posts. So let's just say instead of uh, starting right at 9.15, I start at 9.30 and that means an hour should be finishing around 10.30 and I'm going to probably call it a day at that point. Um, and then we can readjust. But this gives you a nice kind of framework of what your day will look like. So this is tip number one, because if I realize that editing blog posts probably won't get done until like 11.30 or 12.30, I probably would change it to like maybe just do edit half of your blog post. Um, and so, you know, it, it just requires you to play around versus being surprised later on. So that's tip number one. And I'm going to give you tip number two after this clip. All right, guys. So now let's get into tip number two, which is to make your boring tasks interesting. Now, as you saw, my first task for the evening is to get my residency paperwork done. And just to show you, there is a lot of it. Um, and they're all double-sided too. So I could probably think of 101 things I'd rather do than do that. And so I have to make it attractive somehow. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna go across the street, local Starbucks, and just get it done within 20 minutes ideally, and take very little. So just probably just take my laptop, my phone, put it on, you know, do not disturb mode, and then enjoy a nice coffee as I'm kind of pushing through all this paperwork. So I will give you guys um, the progress on that. Hopefully I'm able to be done by 7.45. That was a deadline I gave myself. And then we'll get to tip number three after this clip. All right guys, so managed to finish up at Starbucks and I finished up all my residency paperwork. 
and it is right around 7.45, so I feel pretty good, right on schedule. And I thought it'd be a good time to give you tip number three, which is to use Pomodoro chunking. Now, most of y'all know what Pomodoro is. It's basically a timer to like give you intervals between 25 minutes and five minutes of break and work um, to make you kind of be in a sense of flow. But Pomodoro chunking is an advanced technique that I teach a lot of my students in my courses. I'll link down below, by the way. And basically the way it works is you take a big task. Let's say you have a task that's going to take you an hour and a half. Like I'm about to edit a YouTube video. It may take me a while. You may be studying for an exam or something. Instead of saying I have an hour and a half task, break it up into 25 minute chunks. So an hour and a half task would be four Pomodoro chunks. The nice thing is, is that now you can look at each chunk as an individual task. And in case, you know, it's overwhelming to do an hour and a half of this task, you can do, you know, 25 minutes at the start of the day, 25 minutes at lunchtime, and then the remaining two chunks or the remaining 50 minutes um, at the evening. And so it's, it allows you a little bit of flexibility because then if you wake up late one morning, you can move that Pomodoro chunking later to the evening, or if you have a good start and you feel really productive, you can start getting little chunks of a uh, big task done uh, much faster. So it really helps me stay in a sense of flow. So I'm going to use that technique to edit this YouTube video. Um, ideally, I'm able to finish it with an hour, but I'm basically going to break them up into 15 minute chunks of time slots and uh, then take a little bit of a break in between. So I feel like I have to just accomplish a little piece of a big task. So let's see how this Pomodoro chunking technique works for me as I go ahead and create this YouTube video for you guys. Um, but first, got to get home. So I'll see you guys home. All right, guys, so we are back on my computer and I want to show you how the Pomodoro chunking technique works in action. So as I said, I want to break this down into many chunks because this is a really big task, you know, coming up with a video, doing research uh, and putting it all together and trying to do it in an hour. Remember, my deadline is 845, so even less than an hour. Um, so we'll see if I can get there. So I'm breaking it down into 15 minute chunks. And so I'm going to break them down into essentially four chunks that I've come up with and each of them have a main goal. So every 15 minutes, every 10 to 15 minutes, I'm trying to do uh, one of these tasks. So the first chunk is just going to be me coming up with the research and the points that I want to make for the video, not for the blog post. Um, chunk two is going to be me obviously outlining what I'm going to say, deciding what I'll need for the video in terms of clips that I need to record. And then three or four are really basically where I'm going to be recording. So this is a nice overview because basically these are like mini accomplishments. If I can get through chunk one, I feel pretty good. If I can get through chunk two, I feel pretty good. And if I don't get to chunk three or four today, for whatever reason, maybe it's taking a little bit long, either I can push the task to go a little bit later, or I can start tomorrow and just have to worry about one specific chunk versus this whole video. So, you know, any task you have that seems very daunting, anything that takes more than I would say an hour and 15, an hour and 30 is perfect to try to use Pomodoro chunking because you can try to do it in one sitting like I'm about to do but just in case you don't you know you don't have to feel guilty for um, a task taking a little bit longer than it should um, this is a technique that I love using because it keeps me in a sense of flow and in case I don't let's say I don't manage to get to chunk number four I can just add it to the start of my next day and so I'm already kind of planning and knowing what I'm gonna be working on so I'm gonna basically gonna get uh, get a head start on working on this because I have less than 45 minutes to to finish all this but we'll see maybe i'm a little bit behind schedule that's okay so uh, i'll give you guys a little bit of sneak peek of what's like to make a video All right, so quick update, managed to finish uh, two time chunks, about 15 minutes each, um, and still have roughly about 30 minutes left to uh, do the remaining task, which is basically to record, I've done the planning phase, um, and it is about 8.17, so 8.45 is the goal. So between now and then, basically gonna be recording the video, so I'll catch you guys then. All right guys, so managed to finish up the video and I'm quite happy with myself. It is only right at 8.50. Um, and so I'm only five minutes over my deadline. So originally I wanted to finish my videos around 8.45. So at 8.50, I'm totally happy with, but I am a little bit tired now. So it's a perfect opportunity to mention tip number four, which is to impact stack. So when you have a high energy task, 
high kind of effort task, like recording a video, um, studying for an exam, and then you still have one coming up before you can end your day. I still have to edit a blog post, um, which is also very draining. Find a task in the middle that's not so, so draining and kind of put it in the middle and like sandwich it. So I still need to fold my clothes. And my, that's my other item on my to-do list. So I'm going to put it in the middle so that way I can do it, you know, regain some energy and then use my last bit of effort to edit that blog post. So impact stacking is huge, especially if you feel like you're always um, drained after a big task and you still have a lot left on your plate. Find those little things, maybe some house chores are perfect examples of it. That you can fit in the middle, still feel productive, still feel in a sense of flow, but you know, regain some of that energy that you just spent. So let's get into folding some clothes. Alright guys, so quick update. So obviously managed to finish folding all my clothes. Also started uh, my next task, which was editing the blog post. Now it was like 2,900 words that I had to edit. So it was clearly very tiring. It's right at 1020 and I have about a fourth left of the post to finish. So essentially what I decided is I'm going to use my Pomodoro chunking technique. And since I have a fourth of the task left, I'm going to move that to tomorrow morning and not feel guilty to basically call it a day at this point. Um, and so I thought it was a good kind of transition to end the video with my last two tips. So tip number five, I think it's five, is to basically have a reward at the end of your to-do list or the end of your day. So I would hate it to have done the, the blog post and then go straight to bed because I was so tired. Many of you guys probably know the experience of like studying for a, a long evening and then just not having any time to even enjoy yourself and all you want to do is just go to sleep. Those aren't really fun days because you're not motivated to be productive the next day. And obviously I want to have a productive evening like I did today, tomorrow. So I have to have some type of reward. And it can be 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And so I'm just gonna quickly jump on the Xbox um, for like 10 to 15 minutes is probably all the energy I have. And then probably grab a book and uh, go ahead and read that for the remaining part of the night and then call it a day. That's my reward. It feels like a good transition because I am running now on my schedule and not the tasks that I have to do. And so make sure you have some kind of reward, however small or big you want it to make uh, and schedule that ahead of time, just the way you schedule all of your to-do list items. And then the final tip, tip number six is basically a two part, which is one, taking care of your clerical work at the end of the day. So that's like things such as emails, texting people back. And the reason that I like to put this at the very end of the day is because now you have done everything that you consider to be a priority and now you are responding to other people's requests of you versus like responding to emails as soon as they come in. It seems like you're being prompt, but honestly, no one notices the difference between you applying or replying immediately versus replying in a few hours or like, you know, the next morning. So I like to always put my emails at the end of the day, honestly, till the end of the week, if they can, if I can hold off um, till then, because then I can manage to run on my own schedule. And then the final part of step number six is to go ahead and start scheduling your next morning, at least if not your full day, because you want to get in a state of flow. So I want to be able to wake up next tomorrow morning and have, you know, just as much productivity as I did this evening. Like I got a lot done paperwork, essay, a video, clothes. Like that's a lot. And remember, we started right around like seven p.m. and it's only 10. So it's, you know, at three hours I managed to get done probably what most people would want to get done in a day. And so I want to have that flow tomorrow. So I'm going to create what tasks I want to do in the first like three hours of the morning and maybe getting a workout, starting or at least finishing the rest of the editing. So that way, as soon as I wake up, I know what I have to do versus having to spend extra energy and try to plan it out. You know, you get up, you know what time you need to get up and then you can start getting on those tasks. So that's step number six, do your clerical work at the very end and make sure you spend that very last bit of the day planning for the next morning, if not the next part of the day. So that is all of my six tips that I wanted to give you guys. Um, and hopefully this kind of demonstration of how it applies to at least my evening uh, routine uh, helped you guys understand how you could apply it to your own to-do list. So if you enjoyed this video, obviously make sure you give it a like. And two, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do. Comment down below with anything you learned. If you did enjoy this format, 
of uh, a video where I'm giving tips, but also showing you how it like works in a real life situation. Um, make sure you let me know down below in the comment section so I can make more videos just like this. But thank you guys so much for watching and make it till the end. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, my friends.